again, thank you all very much for joining us. Um, we have uh, two great school districts lined up this afternoon, or for some of you this morning. Um, most of you have already run your audio wizard, and so I'm just going to go ahead and let's get to it. First of all, we are pleased to have two dynamic school districts joining us. Um, first up, we will be hearing um, from the Asheboro High School team, um, which is located in Asheboro, North Carolina. And then we'll be hearing um, from the leadership team of the Sunnyside Unified School District, which um, hail from Tucson, Arizona. We are very excited about both of these schools joining us in this webinar. Just to give you a little bit of background on the Epic Ed um, project, um, first of all, this project is funded through United States Education Department grant. And we work with a dynamic team, including the Digital Learning Collaborative, which is out of the Friday Institute at North Carolina State University, as well as COSIN, the Consorting School Networking, is also one of our project um, team members. So this has been a great collaborative effort and it's an exciting time to be part of this project. This afternoon, um, we're just going to take a few minutes to familiar everyone with the Blackboard Collaborate interface. Then we'll first hear from Asheboro High School team. Then we'll hear from the Sunnyside Unified School District team. Then we'll go over some events and invite you to participate in an evaluation of today's webinar. So first of all, this is um, the interface. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so the speakers will be um, grabbing the mic. If you have questions, please feel free. Um, I have uh, Jackie Bell here with me who will be moderating the chat box. So feel free to type any questions, concerns into the chat box and we'll feed those to our speakers. Also, um, feel free to raise your hand if you do have audio um, capability this afternoon and grab, we'll invite you to grab the talk button. And we are going to be interacting with some of these whiteboard tools in just a few minutes. So we just wanted to give you a little overview of how the interactive whiteboard works. So to give, let everyone go ahead and click your checkbox to go ahead and uh, give the, 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 the tooling uh, a try. Everyone go ahead and give me a click of check marks if you are following along. Excellent. All right, here we go. So again, I kind of already went over that. We, you know, we will invite you to raise your hand and we'll turn the mic over to you. Or as always, please feel free at any time during our webinar to uh, type any questions, concerns, and we will try to get those to our speakers this afternoon. All right, so here, let's go ahead and uh, let's, uh, let's uh, find out where everybody's from that's joining us on this webinar. Go ahead and grab your big um, pen over here. It's one of your um, interactive tools. And you'll go ahead and select your pen. You'll want to pick your color and uh, perhaps make your stroke up to like 15 or 10. Change your color if you wish. And then put a mark on the map about where you are. I'll give you a minute to do that. All right, great. So we've got a lot of people from North Carolina. Obviously, we've got some folks in Arizona. And then help me with my states there, Jackie. Uh, I want to say that Arkansas, Alabama. <laughs> so we've got a, a, quite, a, quite a range of folks here joining us this afternoon, so that's very exciting. So thank you for participating in our interactive portion. All right, so before going any, so, uh, so now I'd like to introduce the team from Asheboro High School. Um, we have with us um, Penny Crooks, who is the Assistant Principal of Curriculum Instruction, as well as Jennifer McGinnis, who will be giving us a teacher perspective of their one-to-one -one initiative. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Penny. Thank you, Lisa. Um, please smile if you can hear me all right. I'm a little nervous about the volume of my voice at the moment. Okay, great. Great to see. Okay, so um, welcome. We're excited to join you this, this afternoon. 
afternoon um, as we share Asheboro High School's journey to a digital conversion. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about Asheboro High School, um, Asheboro High School has always been a school dedicated to student learning and excellence. About 10 years ago, actually about 12 years ago, we um, began the journey onto block scheduling from traditional scheduling. We've also been doing the graduation project where our juniors uh, write a paper and then in their senior year they find a community mentor where they shadow their mentor and develop a product and then they um, present to our a panel of community judges. We're also the home of the Asheboro Zoo School which is a satellite campus that students can participate with the Asheboro Zoo in, in expanding their learning opportunities outside the traditional classroom environment. Uh, we also uh, continued our journey by developing a Blue Comet Academy, which is a ninth grade transition academy to help ninth graders transition to the high school environment. We uh, have an alternative graduation program with our Nova Academy. We began developing PLCs about four years ago, which have really helped us in looking at our pedagogy and looking at student progress and, and meeting the needs of our learners. And other ways we've Blaze Trails is by continuing to build in different aspects of technology. We were awarded the impact grant about four, five years ago, um, and through that impact grant, we purchased smart boards and flip cameras and sentios, and we thought that we were the cat's meow as far as technology went. And then about in 2009, we discovered that we were awarded the impact continuation team grant and um, new horizons opened for us and we learned that technology was barely a pool that we had waded into until that point. In 2009, when we were awarded the impact grant, we began a journey into looking at having every single student have some kind of technology-enabled device in their hands every day that they would take home with them. And what Asheboro High School decided upon was that every student would have a laptop that they would utilize on a daily basis and take home. Um, and, and, and in deciding that, we first had to develop and plan our vision. And so in developing our vision, we, we had a wide variety of different um, aspects that we needed to, to evaluate. Um, Throughout the entire process, our great leader, Dr. Diane Frost, was is, and was our superintendent, and she encouraged us and she worked with us and with her and our school principal at that time, Dr. Uh, Mr. Fitch, Mr. Kimber Fitch, developed a one-to-one -one committee where we worked with teachers from every content, every academic content area, um, uh, central office technology facilitator, central office technology network analyst, school media center, assistant principal, and technology facilitators. We developed a one-to-one -one committee starting in 2009, and we met once every two to three weeks on a Wednesday on a regular basis. It was a standing calendar commitment where we would discuss um, our vision and our plan and our implementation for the one-to-one -one initiative where every single student would have a laptop. And through this one-to-one -one committee, we invited various teachers to, to work with us, um, not just in the committee, but also help us as we sent teachers on various conferences. We conducted multiple site visits, eight-plus site visits. Um, we developed a networking program throughout the state with um, Asheville, uh, Thomasville City Schools, and um, a variety of other places. Um, we researched text and researched more text. We developed a partnership with the Friday Institute through North Carolina State University. And we worked very closely with our community. Asheboro High School is actually um, the only high school within Asheboro City Schools. And so we have a small community that is very invested in the education of the students here in Asheboro High School. So consequently, we felt that it was very important invite the community members with, to be with us in this journey. And we held a number, about four community advisory committee meetings throughout a one-year one year time frame. And in those meetings, we asked the community members to ask us questions. We presented our timeline. We presented where we were at in the timeline. Um, we asked them to play dead 
devil's advocates and ask us the hard questions that that would really stump us so that we were able to anticipate a wide variety of, of successes and challenges that we would have. And so um, after a year and a half of this process of, of working together as a committee, talking to the community, um, utilizing our networks and resources, and going on site visits, we developed a vision. And one of the things that we discovered after that time frame was that our vision really was already aligned to what our vision was at that point in time, that um, every single student in Asheville High School would graduate from a rigorous program that prepares students to be globally competitive, that they would um, be able to live, learn, and thrive in an ever-changing world that demands innovation and creativity and develop the ability to collaborate, think critically, and use technology to solve problems, and that the technology piece was really a tool that would help us um, help our students to meet all these different aspects. Once we had um, finalized and formulated our vision and came to a firm understanding of what our vision was, um, we, we interjected our plan. Uh, we worked very closely with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and with the Friday Institute in developing our plan for implementation of the one-to-one. -one. Um, and with them, we collaborated on developing a logic map to make sure that our um, our goals were aligned to um, our strategies that were written, which would then align to the daily practices that our teachers and students would have. We um, developed an implementation plan, which got into the deep minutia of um, what kind of technology, looking at the partnerships that we would make with different um, technological resources, looking at the infrastructure, looking at a wide variety of aspects. And we also um, utilized a master plan that would help us keep on target um, during uh, the process of implementing the one-to-one. -one. And if you're interested in accessing this, these documents, at the end of the presentation, there will be a link that will share where you can access do I have any questions at this point? Okay. So, um, the third aspect, when we look at the big picture, a third aspect about the um, transition to a, well, the, the digital conversion of Asheboro High School was implementation. This is a big piece for Asheboro High School. Um, we, when you look at our graphic here, we had five distinct points that we made sure we need to ad address. First of all, we needed to make sure that we addressed our expectations. One of the things about Asheville High School was that we had a wide variety of individuals on the comfort level of integrating technology into daily practice with students. We had teachers who, and, and administrators who barely knew how to turn on a laptop much less, um, you know, how to navigate utilizing the laptop. And then we also had teachers who were so savvy that they were a million years ahead of everyone else in the building. And so one of the things that we had to acknowledge was that we had to differentiate our expectations for all individuals within the building, from administrator to staff to students, that, every, that this was a journey that we were all going on together and that um, we were not all starting in the same place at the end of a year, we were not all going to be in the same place, but that we were continuing to grow as a family and as a, as a, a community of learners. The second aspect in our implementation was the logistics, which every school um, that is embarking on a digital conversion will tackle logistics in their own um, manner. But we, we looked at updating the infrastructure for a building that was over 50 years old that's made out of cement blocks. Um, and, you know, deciding what was the device that was best for us and how the deployment would be best for us. Other aspects within our implementation that was very important for us were the um, tools and resources and the support coaching that we utilized. It was coaching from the Friday Institute, from the Department of Public Instruction, um, from support coaching from our own central office to the um, coaching that we had within our own building, which I'll speak more to in just a moment. And then the last aspect that we spent a major chunk of our time in 
like our digital conversion was within professional development. We took a year and a half before those laptops were deployed in Houston to spend on the professional development of all our staff. And when we mean all our staff, from administrators to teachers, um, we spent a lot of time. We developed PLCs. We made the effort to incorporate common plans for the academic courses of math, science, English, and social studies. And they met on a weekly basis. PLCs occurred across the entirety of the school, but um, common planning was for math, science, English, and social studies. And so all PLCs met on a weekly basis where we discussed technology, the integration of technology, we discussed student learning, how um, we talked about unit planning, how um, instruction would change with the, in with the integration of technology, and what were the tools that were out there. Um, other aspects of our professional development also included um, summer uh, professional development over three summers where we invited teachers to come in from three to five days where they learned about technology. In our first year, it was all about technology. What were the Web 2.0 tools? How to use Smart Board, Globster, um, Wikispaces, Wallwisher. And then within our second year, once we got our teachers comfortable with the technology, um, we started to really hone in on the fact that technology was just a tool, but it was the focus was really about curriculum and pedagogy. And so we talk, we focused around literacy and how to use technology to further literacy skills of students using Ego or using Microsoft Word, um, and how to further students' writing skills through script writing and brainstorming through um, inspiration. And so really focused on the curriculum and pedagogy aspect rather than um, the, the technology tool for the technology tool sake. Another aspect of the professional development that we focused focused on was also on the um, on the uh, management classroom management issue. Um, that was one of the I think the greatest uh, nervous aspect that teachers had regarding technology integration was how was how were they going to manage classrooms? That there was this perception that classrooms would get away from them. But we did spend some time working with the Friday Institute and the on-site teacher leaders in um, how students could be managed in a digital environment. Um, so after implementation, there is the assessment piece. And when we look at the assessment piece, you'll see that a lot of our assessment of the digital conversion is on a local basis. When we look at our walkthrough data, we look at the various surveys during our summer for professional development. We looked at um, the survey of teacher perception of the preparedness, teacher working condition survey. Um, we look at uh, artifacts and minutes from PLCs. Um, on the state level, we also have the a North Carolina teacher evaluation instrument, which helps to measure. Um, the integration of technology, looking at our Friday Institute evaluation, and um, also incorporating the teacher working condition survey and the student survey. And then we have our national survey with Speak Up. Any questions at this point? I know I'm going really fast. Um, given the short time frame, but um, we spend a lot of time on the professional development of our teachers and our staff, um, and it really helps our teachers and staff, I think, one of the best things about it was it really helped them to be reflective about their own teaching practice. And so all that time invested really has begun to pay off. If you look at some of our data, you can see some of our demographic data, but you can also see that our dropout data has has improved. We went from 5.1% in 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, we went to 2.88%. Um, the graduation rate has increased um, steadily. Um, when we look at our end of course data, we've seen our English 1 scores have increased. We've seen our math scores have dramatically increased. Um, Last year was a different year for us because we had a smaller number of students taking the Algebra 1 EOC because of the transition to integrated math. 
Um, but when we go back to a true comparison um, from 2009-2010 school year, we, really, we see a dramatic increase in our EOC scores there. We've seen great increase in our biology scores and in our overall composite score. We've also seen a 50% increase in our AP scores. Um, and we've also seen a 33-point 30, increase in our SAT scores. So across the board, we, do, we are seeing that our students are being better prepared, that they are seeing the benefits of Asheville High School's focus on professional development and, and, and student learning and with the integration of technology. And another aspect is that this is something, when we talk about sustainability, you know, we talk about sustainability with technological devices. Um, and eventually we're looking at looking at um, bringing our own devices, but we also talk about the sustainability of personnel, and that's one of the things that by all our investment in our personnel, our teachers are leading our professional development. Now, our first year of professional development is mainly led by central office and by technology facilitator and the administrative staff, but if you come to any of our technology professional development at the school, it's being led by our teachers, for our teachers. They're working together. Um, they, they are often in the media center during professional development days, helping one another, and um, this has really been a, an opportunity to enable and empower our teachers to become teacher leaders. And so um, that goes further in the sustainability efforts than anything else that I can think of. Um, so charting new territories overall, Finally, we have seen high growth after five years. We're so excited and celebrating in the streets about that. Um, some, some interesting details is that we've seen our paper pay pay usage go down. We are utilizing a learning management system with uh, Moodle, which we find phenomenal. Um, we have seen an increase in, in project-based learning. We see that classrooms are more student-centered. Um, we have seen an increased amount of independent um, there have been some challenges, uh, but those challenges are definitely minute and um, incidental in, in light of the, of the progress that we have made. Any questions for me? I am now going to let Mrs. McKinnon introduce you. Um, uh, Penny just asked me to share with y'all some of the advantages and challenges and benefits that I've seen um, with the, with the um, technology in, in my classroom. And I would definitely uh, just want to say, point out that when she's talking about professional development, that was so helpful for us as teachers. I don't know, um, there's so much I learned through all those different professional development sessions that we've done that I never would have learned on my own because y'all know as teachers, we just don't have time to do all that kind of stuff on our own between grades and lesson plans. Um, so it's been really helpful. But um, advantages I've seen, um, I think our students are more engaged. Um, I really like the fact that technology um, addresses multiple learning styles and levels. Um, so that differentiation is really helpful. Um, students have different ways to take notes, different ways to do assignments. They have choices. It's not, okay, turn in a PowerPoint. It's, you know, they have 10 different options. Um, and they don't have to do everything the same way as their classmates. Um, you have easier access to more authentic materials through something like Google Earth or news um, online, things like that. Um, Moodle is really helpful for um, getting information to students, uh, whether it's test dates, uh, due dates, assignments, uh, notes that they took in class and they may need to go back and, and double check if they missed something from the notes or get makeup work. Um, that's been really helpful um, in the classroom. And I really think it's more hands-on for students because they, there's just more outlets for them to create um, in their learning. It's not just you know, note-taking and, and doing just one certain assignment. They just they can really create a lot of different um, in a lot of different ways through all the, the Web 2.0 tools uh, that are out there uh, for them. So I really I've seen a lot of um, benefits and advantages, and I really I really enjoy having laptops in the classroom. Um, and as far as challenges go, um, a lot of things I've learned. I've learned that we have to. Uh, spend time teaching technology to the students, which sounds really backwards because you think they'd be teaching us, um, but they don't know how to use websites like Boki and Teamdo and all these things that we learn about as teachers. 
Um, so we have to you know, you have to build that time into the classroom to walk them through these websites. Otherwise, they don't they don't know all the, the tools that are available to them. Um, discipline and supervision that was definitely probably one of my biggest fears, and I'm glad I took some Friday Institute uh, classes to help me with that. Um, as far as just uh, classroom management and just you know learning different ways to rearrange your furniture and um, just things like that, um, it's, it's been helpful. But it's still, and it's still a challenge. Um, just making sure students aren't off task. They, they really, the first year we had laptops in the classroom, they were very distracted <laughs> a lot of time because um, there was just so much for them to explore on their laptops. So that was kind of difficult at first. But um, it's gotten better, certainly, with, with the discipline and supervision. Um, the technology failures have been a challenge. Um, they're, they're better now, but, if, again, at first, servers going down, Internet going down, and, and things like that. You really had to make sure you had a backup plan. You couldn't just rely on, okay, today we're doing all this stuff on the computer, well, that's the day that, you know, there's a bad storm the night before and there's no internet for the next three days. So you really have to make sure you have a backup plan, um, like a lot of times you have to do anyways, uh, in the classroom. Um, that was another challenge and, and can be sometimes, but again, that's better. I think our technology staff has definitely worked to improve that for us as well. Um, oh, and the other thing too, um, just one, one last little challenge. Um, that I'm finding that students, because they use technology so much, whether it's their laptops or their, their smartphones and whatever else they use, um, it's really becoming, you know, the lines blurring very much between um, what's appropriate to say or do online versus what's appropriate to say or do online in the classroom. And just, you know, like in the writing, for example, and just trying to teach them, no, you can't abbreviate, and, you know, no, you can't this out of the other because we're in the classroom, you're not you know, texting your friend right now. That's a little thing, too, just to kind of you know, notice that's becoming a greater problem. Students are not as aware of formal versus informal communication, especially with technology. Um, but, but I think that overall is, that's a great benefit for students and for teachers. I've certainly learned a lot, and my teaching has changed a lot, and I've been able to grow as a teacher, and so I'm really um, thankful for that and thankful just for the, the ways that we're able to change our, our students' learning as well. Thank you so much, Penny and Jennifer. And Dr. Esquerdo, did you have a question for the Ashboro team? And I, I think she's I think she's answering it, but how many um it's on the digital curriculum. Are they using any kind of um purchased digital curriculum and what kind of laptops are they using and at what grades? We are using the HP. Um, Hewlett Packard. Um, the actual model number, I'm not exactly sure, but it is, it's a pro book. It is on our website um, with the AHS ashbro.k12.nc.us. Uh, that is listed there. Um, we have uh, given every single student in our school a laptop. We have 1,270 students ish right now. And so every single student has a laptop and a laptop bag that they take home every day and that they bring to classes, charge, some not as charged as others, but definitely the expectation is for them to bring them charged. And we have made the entirety of our school wireless from our um, cafeterias to our auditorium to our basketball um, auditorium to our football fields and even our parking lots are wireless for our students to be able to access the internet. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm sorry. The only other question is digital curriculum. What are they using uh, for that? Um, I'm not exactly sure. 
what you mean by a digital curriculum. We are using the learning management system of Moodle. Um, is, is, is that what you mean? Yeah, um, not really. There's um, more digital curriculum on the market now, like Discovery Ed, um, Agile Minds, um, and there's open source. But um, the LMS is our Moodle too, and that's our teacher platform. But the digital curriculum is a math curriculum or science that's that's digitalized now, so to speak. Um, we're not actually using anything. We do use um, Study Island, but we don't have a digital curriculum that is for math, English, social studies, foreign language, or or science. We utilize the resources that we have available from our textbooks that we had before. We found online textbooks, copies of our textbooks as online copies, um, and we utilize the World Wide Web. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anyone else uh, uh, that has a question for Penny or Jennifer? All right, then would everybody please uh, take a moment and use your emoticon drop-down menu and give these ladies a virtual round of applause. And thank you very much, Penny and Jennifer. What a, a wonderful story to share. And I'm sure your students are just thrilled to be a part of your school. And uh, thank you so much for your dedication and passion for the job that you do every day. So now I'd like to go ahead and turn to our other school district. And um, hailing from the Sunnyside Unified School District in Tucson, Arizona, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Esquerdo, who is the superintendent. Uh, it's over to you, Dr. Squerdo. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Squerdo. Are we okay now? There we go. There you go. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Squerdo. The uh, proud superintendent of the Sunnyside School District, and we'd like to give you an overview of what our district is doing in terms of one-to-one -one technology and um, really commend the school district before me and, um, um, and their efforts as well. So it's an exciting time in Tucson, Arizona, and so let me show you what we're doing. Um, first of all, I just have to frame it a little bit for people outside of Arizona. Um, it's a district that funds education 49th out of 50. We've been in the national news um, very frequently over the last few years on, on immigration bills and ELL models, but um, it's one of those things that we see as a challenge, and yet we're still able to move forward with our um, with our one to one. Um, our demographics um, are there. We're a district that's approximately 87% Hispanic, um, almost um, almost 90% free and reduced. Um, and um, we have struggled in the past um, in terms of graduation numbers and dropout numbers. Our effort in, in uh, technology really began with a program called Project Graduation, and I'll get to that in a minute. But first you see graduation numbers, and indirectly we attribute these to technology, and um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. But over the last few years, we have really steadily moved our graduation numbers from their two high schools to the high 800s. Our dropout prevention uh, remains very strong. In uh, 2007, we were holding in two schools about 3,800 students, and now we hold in our schools about 4,700 students. That means they're staying in school, and because of their staying in school, that's the revenue you see on the right-hand side of almost $6 million because they stay in school. This is the program I was talking about. This is what um, launched us and served as a catalyst into our one-to-one -one initiative. It was called Project Graduation, the Digital Advantage. We awarded laptop computers to incoming freshmen who met the four A's, as we called them. It was a 2.5 GPA, as you can see, 95% attendance, and that did it. And, and for four years, we kept our freshmen in school, and we 
we experienced those great numbers with graduation and dropout prevention. From there, though, we really transformed and we moved into laptops for teachers, dropout prevention, um, a one-to-one -one initiative, parent engagement, and community schools and marketing and messages, messaging. It really served as a, a transformation um, effort. Now, here's where we are today. We are a one-to-one -one district. We start in elementary. It's really fourth grade to ninth grade this year. This is massive and it's exciting, um, but it's, it's pretty challenging for us. Um, we have about 1,400 students per grade level. So you can see the numbers as you as you uh, just visualize that. The um, the exciting thing that we feel probably the, the most excitement about, I should say, is the computers in our community. Um, this year we have about 15,000 laptops that are going home um, as we speak every day. Um, we feel this is bridging the digital divide, the language divide, and the economic divide divide for a community like ours. Uh, our goals are, are pretty standard, and I'm sure they were the same ones in our previous district, student achievement, 21st century read, readiness for every student. But, uh, but in Sunnyside, it's about community transformation and family engagement as well. These are probably nine of our major um, strands, if you will, on how we do our one-to-one -one and what we've had to focus on. One is design. Um, how do we implement this? What's our strategic design, our infrastructure, policy development, leadership and change management? Coaching is very big for us, and I've heard that in the previous one. Um, we, are, um, we have a coach in every school who's working side by side to the teachers in our middle and high school. And then we also have digital curriculum. We, um, we have a, uh, you'll see that in a few slides coming up and for math, science, language arts, and um, reading, I believe. We do a lot of PD, and um, unlike our, our previous district, we are learning by doing. We, we, I wish I could say we spent a year and a half getting our teachers ready, but when we finished Project Graduation Visual Advantage, our community was ready for one-to-one, -one, and we went with them. And so we're training our teachers in the summer as we're doing this and learn by doing. The other thing I want to give credit to is Project RED. It's a, a research uh, program uh, project that looked at nine indicators and said if you're doing these well, you're going to see some benefits and outcomes in student achievement. And we're, we're using that as one of our frameworks. And then you see family and community engagement and marketing and messaging. These are the then nine key factors in Project RED. It's about intervention classes, uh, leadership, online collaboration. And so in short, we take these nine indicators and we put them across our strategic design and that's one of the things we're doing very, very well, I believe. Here's a sample of some of our digital curriculum we were talking about. Um, we're using Discovery Ed in Science, Agile Mind in Math, McGraw-Hill, uh, Conceptual Math, and Pearson. We, we, we use Project RED in terms of, let's call them operations, and we use now this in the digital curriculum. The one thing we're really excited about right now is gaming, uh, game-infused learning. Um, we're working with ASU, um, one of our local colleges in, in, um, in the state, and um, we're introducing gaming at different grade levels and how teachers and students can use this to improve student teaching and learning. This is probably our um, other exciting uh, work we're doing, and, and this is about coaching and teacher framework. So, for example, you see on the far left under curriculum instruction, district instructional technology coaches. Those are five district coaches that go throughout our district of 18,000 students and are working with um, teachers at a higher level of, of integration. They talk about teacher integration, technology integration, and digital curriculum. Then under the PD side, we have what's called teacher technology facilitators. These are teachers who've come out of the classroom and are working with um, 
the teachers in elbow to elbow. We have them at elementary and middle school, and then we have our trainers. On the far right, you see our librarians. We are now going to be transforming 22 libraries and really transforming 22 librarians. And they're going to change their roles and responsibilities. We're also adding um, media center technicians, and we're really re repurposing their role too, more from less books to more digital content and hardware. So that's, that's just the overview of, of everything and um, any questions? We have a question about, could they'd like to hear a little bit more about um, your in, um, engagement strategies with your community. And you, you certainly talked about um, computers being out in the community. Could you just talk to us a little bit more about how you approach that and how you sustain that? Yes, we have a, a very extensive parent engagement um, focus here. And some of it came with our technology. Um, but I think right now it, it runs into um, not just that, but for example, we have what's called district parent council meetings um, with the superintendent. And all 20, this is the one I like the best, all 22 schools show up five times a year and they bring a, the principal, a, uh, three parents, and a uh, teacher, um, and, and a parent involvement assist, which is a, person in every site has what's called a parent involvement assist and it's a paraprofessional that works to advocate for the parents and help the parents understand uh, some of the challenges of navigating to a school district since many of our parents um, didn't don't have formal education well if, as you can imagine at those p district parent council there's almost 300 people there five times a year and it's at those times that we talk to the parents about our, our themes, our new initiatives, and, and recently, over the last two years, our technology. Um, we we, uh, we poll text. We um, go online and, and uh, help them research different things. It's really been a, a tremendous um, effort to engage the community. And as a result, you know, I, I might add, um, after our uh, parent, after our project graduation ended, our community passed an $88 million bond to continue to do what we're doing. So it's it's a number of things that, but it's we have parent nights, we have technology nights, we have, um, and it all came through technology. And when the technology started going home, the parent engagement even increased. So it's it, it's been very very um, very encouraging on what we're seeing. So I think. If I have another question, um, what plans for sustainability has been the bond? We um, thirty million dollars of that bond, of that eighty-eight million dollar bond is dedicated to technology. So for the next ten years, we will be doing one to one. Thank you very much um, for that, Dr. Scardo. Um, we also have another question. Um, you had talked a lot about, you know, a lot of elbow-to-elbow -elbow work, a lot of job-embedded um, professional development, which is fantastic. We were wondering, did it, as part of your professional development outreach, was there any opportunities for educators to take online courses? We've started doing that. Um, not a lot yet, but I think, quite honestly, it's one of our new venues that we're looking at. Um, where we can encourage teachers to take online courses. Uh, we just want to make them more collaborative um, and also more meaningful where they can apply them um, directly to their sites and work with teams. But uh, I'll tell you, that's our new venue so that we can look at anywhere, anytime um, as well. The one thing I, I want to mention here along with our online interests is we use our Moodle uh, room. It's, it's our LMS. And all our teachers are expected to put their lesson plans, their assignments, and to really work with parents and students in this. And so this is all uh, starting to take shape. Uh, the other thing we do we're real excited about is our um, parent app. We have an app 
uh, that's now available to our parents that will interface with both the Moodle and our technology initiatives and our parents. So it's all coming together. We're working very um, closely with ASU with a teacher app as well where we can walk around the classroom um, with, uh, and, and give them feedback on what we're seeing. Well, those sound like just fantastic innovations. Um, we have one more question for both um, school districts, if we could. Um, since both of your um, students um, do uh, take their laptops home, so we were wondering, you know, what is the process for students taking them home? And, and, and then as a follow-up, and then how, how, what are the expectations for students and parents to be taking care of those laptops once they do enter the community? And I'll let uh, Penny go first. Followed by Dr. Um, what we do, what we do is we start with parents and students have to watch, uh, come to an information session led by our principal, Dr. Toth, um, and um, in that session he goes over the care and the use of the laptop. Uh, what are the expectations with students? Students are allowed to make these laptops their own, so they can download what they would like. But there are some exceptions, and he goes over what those exceptions are. And on our Ashboro High School webpage under the laptop tab, it does go into um, what they are allowed to download, what they're not allowed to download. It also shares the video that we have um, that was produced in-house through our technology facilitator here at the high school. It also has a laptop care video created by our own drama class on what students should and should not be doing with the, the laptops. And then students take home um, the information and then they are to return it to school, um, signed by the parents. Um, and then students will pick up, all the students pick up their laptops uh, one morning on a regular school day. Thank you, Penny, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Scherdo. Uh, yes, it's, it's been a, a little bit of a challenge, but overall, I think very positive. And I think lessons learned is we do uh, parent orientations, and we've always done them, but the, the, um, what's evolved now is um, parents have to come into a required session where we talk about safe um, and orderly um, cyberbullying. Um, students have to earn a driver's license as well. So there's a driver's license that they, uh, students go through with the teachers in the class about responsibility. Um, we have insurance in all our um, laptops. We've invested, invested in that and it's paying off uh, just in case in terms of damages. We also have CompuTrace um, on all our laptops as well in case they get lost or stolen. Um, the students are taking them home in a bag, I mean, uh, you know, a case. And um, we probably the biggest problem right now we're, we're experiencing is that sometimes they leave them because they know they're insured and they, and they know they have uh, copy trace on them. So it's like leaving a textbook, you know, that kind of problem. But it's really minor. Um, we also are going to really try to um, have the students use them as often as they can. With, um, we have Wi-Fi in all our buses. It's, it's really been a, a systemic transformation in our community where we want them to use their laptops and see the importance of them and and not see them as a backpack, but rather as a very important tool. And I, I think it's working. I really feel very good. you got to look at this, and we have 9,000 units out there daily. And uh, we have very few lost. We have, our, we have some damage by accident, but it, it really has been exciting to see um, what's happening here. So you definitely got a lot of buzz about Wi-Fi on the buses. Uh, you really must say a little more about that. That is quite an innovation that we haven't actually heard of before. So can you tell us a little oh, about Wi-Fi? Well, it, it is something we just, with our bond, I, I said again, we're very fortunate, and we purchased our new buses. And so with buses, we said, why not Wi-Fi on the bus? And so for a real reasonable cost, we've, we've, um, we're setting up the Internet in all the buses, and we have 40 new ones and another 40 older ones. And so all 80 buses 
now have Wi-Fi. So the students can do their homework on the way home. All of this is all, it's seamless, and it's been really, really exciting. That is just fantastic to hear about. We, um, that is just a, such a wonderful, seamless way, as you put, to, to keep that learning anywhere, anytime, going from um, school to home. Um, we actually have a, pen, a question for Penny. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Esquerdo talked a lot about how they have dipped down. They started in high school, as, as most of the digital conversion initiatives do start, but they've dipped down in, um, in the fifth grade, sixth grade, and now this year with fourth, fourth through ninth. So we were wondering, Penny, if you guys in Asheboro had any thoughts, uh, plans for perhaps expanding to either middle school or the elementary school? We have actually. Uh, Dr. Frost has been able to um, plan that into our strategic plan. And so actually both of our middle schools do have laptops. Um, each school has implemented it differently. Um, and, and Dr. Frost allows us that flexibility, but one school, um, the students, they don't take them home. They utilize it throughout the day, and so the students pick it up at the beginning of the day, and then they return it at the end of the day. And then in the other middle school, they um, utilize them in laptop carts throughout all the classrooms. And then in the elementary schools, they uh, have laptop carts that are is one to one up down to the fourth grade. But the um, lower grades are able to access those cards too if need be. Fabulous, thank you. Well, I'm gonna, we're getting close to our end of our, our session here, um, um, but I want to turn it over to anyone else for any final questions, thoughts, or concerns that you would like to share with our two wonderful school districts, A team. Well, before I go any even further, please let's all give a virtual round of applause to Dr. Scardo and the wonderful team at Sunnyside. All right, well, this concludes our second episode of One Size Does Not Fit All series. Again, thank you very, very much to the Asheboro School District, both Penny and Jennifer, as well as to Dr. Esquerdo from Sunnyside Unified School District in Tucson, Arizona. Um, please, uh, we will be continuing to host these types of uh, webinars and informational sessions um, at epiced.org, um, or you're welcome to follow us. We definitely tweet out these events um, to keep up with what's coming up at uh, our Twitter feed at Epic Ed Community. Um, just to give you just like a highlight of some of the uh, events that are coming up, um, we definitely we have a MacArthur Foundation Connected webinar. will be hosted on Epic Ed on September 13th. Um, this Friday, uh, the, the first uh, episode or series of, from the Teacher Feature Friday will be posted and we'll be looking at um, highly connected educators. Um, no, a week ago, or a week tomorrow on September the 19th, we are pleased to have um, the Assistant Director of Educational Technology, um, Karen Cater, along with Mark Edwards, the Superintendent of Moore's School District, who will be talking about um, about the digital transformation of, ed of education. So please join that webinar. And then finally, um, from ACETA, uh, they will be talking about, we will be having a conversation about how do we get ready for the Common Core Online Assessment, and that will be taking place on Tuesday, September the 25th. So definitely check out epiced.org. You'll see a tab that says events, and that will bring you right to those events. So we just wanted to highlight those for you. Um, you will see, um, again, there's epica.org. Uh, it's where we are. We will put an archive of this session um, up in a, a couple of days. So if so there were um, your colleagues or other folks that you know that weren't able to join us this afternoon, please uh, point them back to epica.org so they can uh, view this wonderful, wonderful session. So again, thank you to everyone. Um, if you look in the chat window, you will see a link. Um, if you would please take a moment to um, fill out that evaluation so that we can get feedback on these types of webinars. And again, thank you all very much for coming, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>